Hello and welcome to a video uh, on the mechanics papers and this one's 2018 question 7 and I've put this under my category of planes and forces so I've got five categories basically which because uh, every single mechanics paper has five questions and they always basically the five categories are wonky moments, projectiles, planes and forces which I'm doing now and then variable acceleration and then something about constant acceleration and those last two are about vectors basically um, look for all uh, the topics and uh, yeah like I say they, they, they come up on every single paper so it's nice to sort of get that kind of uh, you know idea of what always comes up now don't get me wrong there's always room for a bit of a curveball in these papers and so you shouldn't ignore things like well for example I've done lots of questions on wonky moments and it's possible they could ask a flat moment question one of these days they certainly have on the other exam boards and so that's always something worth being aware of like you know this is specifically designed for an excel anyway i'll stop waffling and get on with this question so this is planes and forces more often than not they're inclined planes but here we're lucky and we've got a flat one so start putting your forces on the diagram because it's bound to be useful 20 G going down, uh, that doesn't mean 20 grams, it means 20 times 9.8 because it's mass times acceleration. We'll have some kind of a contact force going up a normal reaction. And then uh, it's pulled along a rough horizontal floor with 40 newtons. So I guess if it's being pulled to the right, the friction must be going to the left. And if it's genuinely moving, friction will be at a maximum. Uh, tan alpha is three quarters. So do the prep work. That means sine alpha is three fifths and cos alpha is four fifths. If you're wondering how I'm getting those numbers, well, I'm just drawing an alpha here and opposite over adjacent. So that's three over four. You can use Pythag to work out that as five. And then you can see sine alpha is three fifths and cos alpha is four fifths you definitely want to be good at doing that if you're doing these kind of questions mu is 0.14 apparently and the crate is modeled as a particle and the handle is modeled as a light rod okay find the acceleration of the crate well um firstly let's do these questions always work the same way you need to do uppies equal downies uh, and the ups will equal the downs because it's not bouncing and so r plus now you're going to have the component acting up from the 40 and that's going to be 40 sine alpha well that's going to equal 20 g which means we can work out r because sine alpha is three fifths and three fifths of 40 is six tenths of 40 so that's going to be 24 and so you're going to have 20 times g which is 196 minus 24 and so by the look of it r is going to be 172 i think um and now the lefty righties well, these don't balance, yeah, because it's accelerating. So we can't use like a, you know, lefts equal rights here. We've got to say stronger force, which is 40 cos alpha, minus weaker force, which is F max. And the reason why I'm saying that's stronger is because it's moving to the right. It's accelerating. Uh, equals uh, mass times acceleration equals 20A. And now remember that we can work out F max because F max is mu R. And so that's 0.14 times 172. Let me just get my calculator out. 0.14 times 172. That comes to 24.08. And so now I can do 4 fifths of 40, which is 8 tenths, which is 32, minus 24.08 equals 20a. And so I guess I've just got to Take that and divide it by 20. So 32 minus answer divided by 20. Okay, I'm getting an answer of 0 0.396 meters per second squared. And that's how you do the first bit. Okay, pop B. The crate is now pushed along the same floor and this time uh, it's being sort of kicked, if you like, kicked downwards. The handle is inclined uh, at the same angle alpha to the floor and the thrust in the handle is 40 newtons. Okay, as shown in figure two below, explain briefly why the acceleration of the crate would now be less than the react acceleration. Well, I'll tell you what, it's because this is going to affect the uppies and downies, yeah? Because this time you're going to work out R by doing like... 20g plus because that component's actually going down and then to the right, right you're going to be doing 40 sine alpha there just like we did before up here in this equation let me just highlight what i'm comparing this to 
comparing it to that equation, basically it's going to be on the other side, the 40 sine alpha. And so you're going to get r equals that. In other words, r is going to increase, yeah? So r increases, and therefore f max increases. Yeah, and so you've got more friction. This makes a lot of sense as well if you think about it. Obviously, if you kick a bag down against the floor, you increase the friction. Whereas if you pull it up, so you're moving up from the floor, you reduce the friction. And so this has got like a like quite an intuitive uh, like result here. F max should increase, and therefore, as a result of that, um, that will decrease. You know, we basically because the acceleration, how did we work out the acceleration? We did 40 cos alpha minus F max over 20A. Well, this number's gonna be smaller and therefore the acceleration's gonna be smaller. Yeah, this, you know, or if you prefer, just like there's more resisting force. And so this resistance causes the acceleration to decrease. And that should get me the answer. Uh, let me just tell you though, let's have a quick look at the Mark scheme and see what they said. Uh, they said pushing will increase R, yeah, so we got that, uh, and will, which will increase available F, yeah, um, increasing F will decrease A, yeah, that's what they wanted, basically. <laughs> okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope it was useful, keep up the hard work, bye-bye.